Welcome into this week's episode of the M&M Show. Micah Hyde and Maddie Glab here. I do here. like M&M. I do. I would like Micah and Maddie better, but carry on. We can do M&M. I thought we discussed this. I thought we were cool with M&M, and I mean, I want Maddie and Micah show, but... Carry on. I don't. I, this I is going to be something we talk about each and every week. Brandon Bean told me if it's not the Eminem show, if you want Micah first, then get in the boot out of here. <laughs> Bean told you that? Yeah, he told me. All right, after this, I'll call Bean. I'm not scared JK, to do that. JK, I'll JK. talk to him. I'll talk to him. We're going to talk NFL. We're going to talk Buffalo Bills. We're going to talk some pop culture and things that happen around One Bills Drive because Micah Hyde definitely knows it best. We're going to have a lot of fun on this show, too, because that is the goal of this show on the Eminem Show as we decided. I like it. Let's get into Fit Check here to start us off because our players were rocking some Let's see what they're rocking. Amazing looks heading into this Jets game. This one o'clock Jets game. It was so great to get back to a home one o'clock game. It was. And we're just going to start off with a bang here. Stefan Diggs. Listen, let's, let's, I, let's I, walk I, I saw this. Let's walk this. Yeah, I saw this before the game. I saw this. You know, everyone's retweeting it, and I'm, and I'm looking at it now. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this fit. Um, that's Diggs. He's, you know, fly guy. He likes to show up, you know, with, with some loud stuff. Do we think that's a Birkin? Yeah, I, I don't know. I probably. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. But, I mean, I know. I can't pull it off, so I can't judge it off that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's Diggs' fashion. So, you know, if it makes him play good, keep doing you, Diggs. Keep doing you. He is in his own category, like mm -hmm. we said. Um, I think the over the face, I just got the beekeeper vibes, with which I love beekeepers. <laughs> I mean, bees are so cool. I love the jacket. I love the the brown and the pop of pink and yeah. the cream. Yeah. I like the colors and how they all came together. I can together. see Beekeeper. I yeah. can see that. Now that you say that, That's I can what see I was that getting. for sure. Yeah. But I'm sure this is all designer. I was saying next week we need to like try and hunt down the designers that he was wearing and try to we try to explain. We should. That's the, that's no the idea, next step to fit check. That's, that's the next step to fit check. Yeah. I'm we sorry. Gotta, can we get we somebody on that? Guys. Can we get somebody on that? I got it. I got it. Next up, Shaq Lawson. He was. Ooh, that boy, Shaq. Hey. I am in love with this, this outfit. This, this is, this Pink is a front is runner. This is his color. This is a front runner for sure. And I saw this jacket. And I saw him walking in. I was like, Yo, Shaq, that. Once again, like Saran last week, you know, I said yeah. you you can't come in this locker room and not make plays if you're wearing that, and and, the, and he went and balled out. The shades and the I shirt know, and fly. like the kind of bell bottom jeans mm -hmm. that he's With rocking the pink shoes. and the pink shoes, like chef's kiss. Yeah, yeah. He looked Shaq so good, that. and he played good against his That's former team. That's what I'm saying. Team. That's what I'm saying. When you put on the fit and you show up and you come with a purpose. It, you know, the field work takes care of itself. You know, that's that's just how it is. Start with the fit. All right, next yep. up is Tremaine Edmonds. He always <laughs> looks clean. I Big, feel like he smooth, always man. puts together a really nice look. What do you think of this? You one? know what, Maine is. I, I st like. I think he's still 21. He's been in the league he's for like five 19. years, and he's still like 19. Um, <laughs> but he has an old soul, and he's just smooth. And this is a main smooth look, you know, mm -hmm. just like Kay last week with, with the Kobe. Yep. You know, mains, mains means business, um, you know, walking in, the mindset, the Kobe mindset, the black mama mindset. And uh, that's just main, man. He's a smooth guy, and, and I, I like the fit. I like the jacket, too. It's, it looks like it's got some velvet on it or something like that. It mm -hmm. looks good for the winter. Next up, we've got Taiwan, who I just, I love the color coordination mm -hmm. here. It just, it seemed like it needed to be on the front cover of a magazine, yeah. whatever yeah. brand he was rocking. I yeah. love the burgundy with the navy mm -hmm. and the touch of white and the hat. It just brought it all together. Yeah, no, opposite of Maine, he's a young guy. This is the older guy that yeah. can just put it on and just another smooth guy. He can dress. It, you know, Taiwan can dress, and I don't think a lot of people know that, but he stays low-key with it. And this is another look that, you know, this is something that I'd wear. Just nice, smooth, you know, with the burgundy and blue. Not too much, but just Not enough. Much. Not too much. I, I like it. Okay, okay, Taiwan. Greg Rousseau, we're going to go young again. Yeah. So we hit Tremaine, we hit the old head in Taiwan. Now we're going to hit Greg Rousseau because he had an incredible game against the yes, Jets. Yes, he did. <laughs> look at those shoes. 
He looks like he's a skater, he and does. I love it. That's that's definitely a skater look. Um, <laughs> that's back when I was in like middle school. That's that skater. He was a skater. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I wasn't gonna sing it. I'm glad you did because it was going in my head. But yeah, I like it. I like it. That's uh, another like fit that I couldn't wear. So you know, I I, uh, I think Greg put it on, and he and he bought out. And lastly. We've got to shout out Tredavious White because we, we talked about the Trey gray Dave. pants uh -huh. that Trey always wears. So he switched it up. No, he he was gray all day. Gray oh. all day, baby. <laughs> Look at Trey. Uh, it ain't no thing. Yo. I'm just walking over to the stadium for the game. <clears throat> you know what? I'm not even going to comment on this one just because <laughs> Tredavious is just funny. He's just <laughs> young Shaq, man. That's my boy. I love him to death. He's just, you know, whatever. I guess comfort is what he wants. Comfort he wants team. to be warm and comfort coming into the comfortable coming into the in, game. He played in most of the game. He all the game. He played a lot of snaps. Yeah, all the game. The entire yeah. game. Yeah. Yep. So you know. So Trey, he's got to be comfy. I see you, but he's he's hiding. He's hiding. He has some fits to put on. Yeah. We just got to catch him. We'll okay. catch him one of these times. All right. All right, Trey. You heard us. You mm -hmm. heard us. So. We gave Roger Saffold a point last week. That was who I picked. Yeah. You picked Saran, Saran Neal. Mm -hmm. So they've got a point each. We're going to assign point totals here as we move on in this season of the show. Mm -hmm. Who is the best dressed in your eyes? Well, like I said, I got to go with that pink coat. Mm. I got to go with the pink coat. Shaq Lawson. So Ty good. Crane. Crane Ski. He has all the nicknames and he has the fashion. So I'm going with Crane. Okay. I'm going to say the same thing because... He's getting pink, two points. Pink is He's going to take the lead. Color. He's going to take the He's lead. He's going to take the lead. Okay, Craig. I loved it. I loved it so I see much. It. And we got to zoom in on that piece, though. I got to see what that piece says. 90. It's the 90 piece. It's the 90 piece, I think. Oh man, he got his number left, back. Coming back I think back he to left Buffalo. a chain behind somewhere. It was somewhere in the facility, and one of my coworkers picked it up, and they were like, "Dang, this is heavy." He, he probably even know he lost this it. He probably even know he lost it. No, no, <laughs> Crane. But hey. Hey, shout out to Crane. You're up, you're up in the lead, what, 2-1-1? Two, 2-1-1. One to one. Two, one to one. You better come back next week ready to, ready to uh, take a demanding lead. We'll see. All right, that's Fit Check. We're going to see who has the good looks next week. Joining us on this week's episode, we've got the snowman himself, Dion welcome, Dawkins. Man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Boy. We had some style with Saran Neal last week. We've got style with you this week, but you really bring the personality, and that's 100%, what we wanted for do. this week's episode. Try my best to bring a little snow. <laughs> Where does the snowy personality come from, Dion? Um, truly, I will give the credit to my mother. Mama Dawks, she's the realest. Um, she is as true as they come. And I definitely think that I get all of my gems from her and my dad as well. But my mother is the true light to all of this for real. See, now I feel like I feel like if I was to go to your house right now with you mm -hmm. um, and walk in, like everybody's screaming. Yeah. Like it's just loud. <laughs> There's just kids running around. Kids, There's so just people like people are yelling at each other, and it's just like it's just chaos. Like, it is. Is, is that it's how it is? It's controlled chaos. It's controlled chaos. Yes. yes. I'm telling you, when I do go home. Uh, so my daughter just turned three, and she is in the phase now where, like, when she sees me, like, she's like, what? Huh? Daddy's home? And she's good at dancing. And she just gets to run in, and then she just wants to have a dance party, and she wants to play. That's dope. And she just wants to just do something. And I be feeling so bad, cause like I, because, you know, like, I have three kids, and, like, my daughter grabs so much attention and energy that I be feeling like, yeah, I probably got to chop this up a little bit because <laughs> yeah, 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 like my son's up. not really talking yet. Yeah. So it's like Delilah's world, you know, and I'm like, Dad, come here, Dale. Let me pick you up, my guy. How you doing? <laughs> Buka, let's get lit. What I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, so, so it's a vibe, man. But, yeah, it's definitely controlled chaos. Nice. I will controlled chaos. You, chaos you post capital. on your Instagram story a little mm -hmm. bit of that controlled chaos. So follow Dion if you don't yeah, already. Yeah. It's it's some epic Instagram <laughs> stories. I think when all the snow was coming down yeah. and you guys were pretty much snowed into your house, I remember like a, a video of your daughter. She wanted her mac and cheese cooled. So you like put it on like a three <laughs> foot thing of snow. It it uh, looks oh like God. a such a fun house to be a part of. You're right. It is because we're just true. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't hide anything. <laughs> I'm just just so open that, like, I just let, not them do what they want, but, like, we don't like to say no. Like, families grow, grow up and, like, you learn about, oh, you don't do this, don't do that. But, like, the kids are two and three. Like, why are you telling them no? Mm -hmm. They're so curious. Like, they want to know different ways. Like, Buka, yeah. like, like, she's like, I want my noodles cooled off, daddy. And I'm like, 
I'm not about to sit here and blow your noodles until they cool <laughs> off. It's cold as heck outside. Let me just slide the back door, sit it on the thing, and to. give it a minute. You're good. You yeah. know? So let's have fun with it. So you know, nah, you, you can definitely tell your personality. I feel like your personality comes out a lot like within your style and, right. and, and how you act and, and all that. So, so when you're putting on a fit, what's your mindset? Like, is it all about your mood or how you go about it? You know, it is. That's a great question. Um, I really don't know. You know, I, I like the core to be black. Mm -hmm. Like I like that's the core. I like, that. like I like we the core. We were all see? black that's heading it. into the Jets that's game. Right that's there. it. It looks that's so it. good. I, I am it. a core black guy when it comes to my style, and then I like to throw in colors. Mm. You know, like that jacket, like that we're looking at now. Like that is a, like it's a different black. So that's like giving mm -hmm. vibrant color. Like mm -hmm. right now, I have a jacket on, and it's giving you energy with color. Like I'm a huge energy guy, so I try at my Big best energy. to to like keep it tone yeah. and then I throw it at you because <laughs> because that's me. Like like I'm very loud, I'm very, you know, just vibrant. So like when I see you, I'm like, yo, what's up, man? Man, he was good. Man, he, he, was really, good. he really does. He so, really does. So so it's a vibe. So I just try to just, you know, but you know it's hard though, because I'm a big guy mm -hmm. and it's hard to find clothes. So when I find clothes, I buy the clothes. So if it's a calm clothes I buy it if it's loud. I buy it. So, buy it because you, you gotta know, have it. Gotta have it. What it's, was it's the look to today? What did we put together today, Dion? Um, you know the solid black jeans. I actually mm -hmm. had these jeans on yesterday. So if you're looking real close, I had them on yesterday. Um, <laughs> That's okay. That's and okay. Uh, I took the Little Wayne graphic tee out, and then I have an off white, off white jacket to put it all together. I like it. Then with the little corduroy hat. I like it. You know, shout out New Era. You know, that's the people. Can you also shout out your snowball chain? Yes. Because I know this was, this is a newer chain, right? I do, yes. We, we can zoom in on this? Yeah. yeah that's, Show that's it out. I do have a little snowball chain. If y'all can see, I also have my nails snowed out. I got oh, a snowflake and a cross on my nails. Man. And uh, it goes snowball. And then, look, you can't even zoom in because they You they can't even focus the on There they go. Tell me, but yeah, it's, it's just me. And I was never really a huge like jewelry guy, but uh, De Deanna just told me like she was like, Dion, like get yourself something. And I was like, all right, that's that's you exactly because because yeah. like I usually do things for others, and I really don't be doing much. So then I, I was like, hey, let's just that's, get the snowballs. That's a, that's a perfect transition to what it I was is. about to ask you. It perfect. is. You always do things for others. That's that's that. Ever since I met you back in 2017 when you got drafted here, I could tell that you you have a big heart. Yeah. Like you have the one of the biggest hearts of somebody I ever met and you just want to see that. other people have fun. Yeah. And um, you know, you see within, you know, your foundation, your foundation work, what you do in the community of Buffalo and all that, you see how big of a heart you have. Um and obviously, you know, you talk about that must come from your mom, right? Yeah, definitely comes from uh and my mother. But my but my dad kinda crafted it like um like growing up, like it was it was just like um, we were always the first ones at places and the last ones to, to, to like to leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it was cleaning up, if it was helping set up, like we were just always doing something. So it was like, like I kind of adapted that, you know, give a hand when you can give a hand. Mm -hmm. And I've always had hands to give and help. So I've always been in that p position. But I appreciate you, though, because yeah. um, like like I mentioned, like when I got here, you know, like being fresh in the NFL, I didn't really know. So I looked around the locker room and then I seen guys like Micah, I seen guys like Poe, I seen guys like Lorenzo, and I was like, you know, these are these are well put together guys that, you know, I want to craft myself to be like and to, you know, let other kids look up to. So with everything that I do, you know, it's really a reflection of guys like Micah. I and that, and uh, like even I and I mentioned him like mentioned this to him like yesterday, like I wish more people would be open to tell people that like mm -hmm. like people are so scared to just tell somebody like bro like you're elite you're that guy mm -hmm. like I look up to you I respect you like you're a great father mm -hmm. like I want to be a father just like you and then better like it's all about I'm spreading love. Him. It's about spreading like, love. You know, but that's what I feel like. But hey, not to get too all those to the end of the <laughs> body, body, you feel me? But well, yeah. to get even a little bit more sentimental, yeah. I mean, you were named uh, the Walter Payton Man of the Year this year yeah, for the Buffalo Bills, so dope, and that bro. is such a huge honor huge. for you, Dean. And I, I mean, people notice the work that you do in the community. Guys like Micah, guys like Poe, they helped lead the way and, and show you, hey, this is how you can give back. These are the people that you can um, meet that will help you give back. And, and yeah. you have done that, and you've 
done that so well here in Buffalo, and I think that's why so many fans absolutely love you and love mm. following what you're doing um, from day to day, from game to game. So what, what did that honor mean to you when you found out? <sighs> the, the honor still means everything, you know. Um, it's, it's really the truly, it's the best honor that I've ever, ever received. Um, you know, like being drafted, like I can say, like getting an NFL contract, everything, like like all those are great honors. Like, yes, that's a part of my football career. But when you can be honored for being a good person to others, it's the best, it's the best feeling ever. Like, for instance, like as an example, like, you know, I'm an example guy, analogies or whatever, but you call them. Um, if you give somebody a gift that's not expecting a gift, their face just, just lights up with joy and smiles and like, like if you were to do something for like somebody and it's unexpected, it just like, like it just fuels up, right? And that is an addicting feeling to me. Like I enjoy making other people smile. I enjoy being just present for people like that might not, you know, uh, expect us to be there. Yeah. Like, like just be in places where that, but like they're like, yo, like Dion is here. Like Mike is here. <laughs> like, like, yo, we're here. What's yeah. up? You know, and then like, they're all happy. Like, that's the best feeling ever. But, you know, it is truly an honor. Um, I'm still learning a lot about Walter Payton now because yeah. like he was an older player. So like, like now that I am like, you know, honored, like in his light, like now I'm doing like my research of like, why is he him? Like, why does he have that, like that title? And now I'm looking into things like, you know, all right, now I'm going to pick up some other stuff that he's done so I can help, you know, myself and then grow from other kids that look up to, you know, guys like us. And I want to ask you both this because we had the community honors dinner this week where uh, people around the community, organizations, foundations are recognized for their work in the Buffalo community as well as our players. Dion, you were recognized. Micah, you were also recognized. Yeah. What did that mean, Micah, to, to be a part of that event and, and get shouted out for what you've been able to do in the community, your softball tournament that yeah. you do every year? Dion, you do so much with Dion Dreamers. How was an event like that just to be well, it, it was, recognized and, and loved on a little? Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing, you know, just to, just to show up. And I had my executive direct, director, Tracy Troxell, came. He, he drove in from Ohio. Um, and I, it, was, it was special because I wanted him there because mm -hmm. he's done so much for the foundation. And, you know, I think when a lot of people think of Imagine for You, think of the softball game that we held, you know, annually here in Buffalo and all that, all the guys come out, you know, they, they show their support to the foundation. So, you know, obviously I, I, I couldn't do it without them. But on top of that, what, you know, what the, what the board and what the staff continue to do each and every day, I have a Kicks for Kids event tonight that I literally didn't even plan. I just have to show up to. Like, that's, that's what they're, they allow me to do. They allow me to be myself. And I'm, I'm just a little kid. Like, I'm a little kid from a small hometown where, I just want to hang out with kids and, and make them laugh and have fun and, and do all that type of stuff. So they allow me to do that. And I was, it was extremely special yesterday to be able to, to you know, let them know thank you for, for doing what you guys do. And obviously here in the community, just what the Bills Mafia has done for this foundation is just truly remarkable. I can't even put into words. Like I, could, I was tearing up yesterday even just being at that event because, like, it was it was it was special. It was you know really really close to my heart. Dion almost had me in tears for the speech mm -hmm. he gave yeah. receiving his award. Special man. That was yeah. incredible. Yeah, um, <laughs> I also spoke about that and with Micah afterwards. Um, like when it's when it's true, and when it's really true, it's it's hard to to fake it. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so much that goes into you know even being able to receive some type of honor for something like that. And for the people that don't understand, like we give so much of our downtime yeah. away. You guys don't have a lot of that and to begin with. And we don't have a lot. And then we have families. Like Micah has a full family. I have a full family. And we're choosing to give the time that we can be given to our families to the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why the communities become our family. Mm -hmm. And we adapt that relationship. So it is, it is a truly special thing. And for, you know, guys that choose to take that route, I salute them because yeah, it is it is it is not an easy route and it's and it's a loving heart filling route but it is far from easy and you know i applaud every last person you know that was in that room because it takes a a lot to like you know do that mm -hmm. and like also like but like i was like having a conversation um with diana and uh she had mentioned something i was like yo like like that's true like it's it's easier to be 
a good person and it's hard to be a bad person. Yeah. You know, like you put so much effort into doing bad and it's so easy to really do and do, and do good. So why not and do good for, for others, especially that we're living, you know, 10, 15 like, minutes away, you know, like let's do it t together. Like, you know, heck. Just that, I mean, that's Bill's Mafia to a T. Yeah. That's what they do. They, they're, they're always showing love. Um, you know, I spoke, I spoke before about, you know, when I got hurt, Bill's Mafia donated $50,000 to my foundation. Just like, I just got hurt. Like, that had nothing to do with the foundation. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And then we've seen, you know, the Andy Dalton thing. Mm -hmm. We've seen Lamar Jackson. Right. You know, we've seen. I even like, saw I'm people to, I'm donating starting to, forget. to Mike, Mike White. He's, That's what he I'm does saying. Like, with I'm, I'm starting Olympics to. And yeah. Fans were donating after he took a couple big hits in the game yeah. against Bills. It's, it's like I'm starting to forget all the things that Bills Mafia does. And, like, it, it's. Like that's I'm, I I'm speechless when I when I go to talk about the people in this community because I've never seen anything like it and I've been to some some very special places like I my my hometown is is special I've been in Green Bay obviously you that's I played in Lambeau I played for in Lambo I've been to an awesome awesome environment with you know in in Iowa um, where they are the NFL team they are what everyone is watching but nothing matches and I love those I love those communities but nothing nothing matches Bills Mafia mm -hmm. nothing it's just, it's it's every day. It's constantly. They're always supporting this team, and you know I'm thankful to come here in 2017. I know D Dog, you know, has, has been a part of that. We're the original OGs of 2017. You guys it's are true. the Sean, the Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean era, and um, you know I wouldn't have it any other way. It's truly been a blessing. Well, speaking of Bills Mafia, Bills Mafia loved your block against the Jets, Dion, mm -hmm. when Josh Allen scored that touchdown. Oh, yeah. You. That was said, oh yeah. Folded my boy. He had to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. He had to go. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we don't like the Jets. Yeah. We don't like the Dolphins and we don't like the Patriots. Yeah, it true. is what it is. Sometimes you gotta take them home. Sometimes you gotta lay them, you know what I'm saying? Tell them to go home and you feel me. Look, Blicky! Look, look at Look at that, look at hey, that no, block. No, no, but, but I'm on the sideline. It's still a hit see how I hopped up. I'm on the sideline and I saw the block. And I just see D-Dog just running, <laughs> like running away from everybody. And, I, you know, he's just excited. Boom! Like, yeah. Get him yeah. out of there. Let him out, big guy. He's just excited. Go. That's a big boy on the move. So what, Look, go, go, go. Yeah, he go, was just go. running towards the sideline. And I'm like, yo, he he blew somebody up. That's yeah. for sure. That's what football is, though. Yep. That's that's my touchdown. Like, yep. like that's why – like, that's not why and I play. But that's, like, that's like my – First down for the yeah. win. That's yeah. that's it. Well, right offensive there. linemen don't get that recognition that you sure. know Josh or Diggs or you know even some people on on defense. You guys don't get that. So you know to be able to talk to you and I, I eat, you know with, with you guys in the cafeteria. Right. These guys <laughs> are funny. <laughs> like first of all, if you have any you want to you, you want any of the the best restaurants in town or the way games, if you want to go they to a know. best restaurant, they know where to go, <laughs> what to get, who to talk to. And so that's why I love – I'm always around the offensive linemen <laughs> and the, the defensive guys. linemen because the big guys know what to do. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, bro, we, we can go in the cafeteria and the guys are like, be like, man, there ain't nothing to eat. I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> watch really? this. Like, watch this, watch bro. this. Grab a little roll, throw the steak in there, you know, like put a little soup to make it a little saucy. Put a little sauce on there. Now you got to just have a little steak soup sandwich. Oh. Eat that joint oh like schmunchy, schmunchy, and you good. We got a part-time chef on our hands sure. right I now. I some stuff up. You know, I got to whip it. Oh. The mac and cheese. We know you got to whip it. You are a character, bro. <laughs> to finish off this interview, we like to kind of throw some questions out to you about the offensive line room. Okay. All right. We talked about your swag. <sighs> Who else has some great swag in that room? Rogers have. Oh, yeah. You know, Big Rogers yeah. is definitely mm -hmm. smooth. He's smooth. That, his, I mean, his nickname is, is, is Big Smooth. Big Smooth. And it's for a reason. Big he Raj. Was rocking, he was rocking the Louis V jacket last telling week. Telling you. Javinci this yeah, week. Yeah, this week, Givenchy. I'm talking about you want to spend a check and look great. That's, Roger will do it. Yes. Okay, so who, like, I, I feel like I want to go in there, just one meeting, just to see what's going on. Like, mm -hmm. who is the funniest, other than you, because I know you're a character, who's the funniest guy in there? The funniest guy, and there, there really isn't no funny. GVR is pretty funny. GVR, he's, yeah, he's one GV, He's GV, witty. He is very he's witty. Very witty. He's an old, older guy. GVR is very funny. Um, Spencer is funny. Bates is funny. But it's like a combination. Like, like it's just not like one guy is just leading that uh -huh. that funny. Is cool there guy. like a trio or a duo of the two who 
really lead the jokes? Because some guys can it, pair up together. And and you and Roger. You guys, yeah. are the, you guys are the Spencer class clowns. Spencer Bates. The class clowns. Yeah, it's, it's definitely me and Raj. Yeah. Like, it, like, it's either me and Raj, Spencer and Bates, or GVR with a hint of Mitch. Mitch doesn't really say too, too much. Mitch but is funny. sometimes Mitch when Mitch talks, yeah. it's just like, oh, <laughs> You said snap. what? You just said it. I heard it said it. <laughs> you know? But, yeah, it's funny. Who's the old head? Who's the who's Mitch, the dad? for sure. Pops. Pops. Mitch is Mitch, Mitch is a dad. Mitch, when Mitch got here, nope, he was like, the old head. Yeah, his like, personality is just old head. You know, he's bald, big beard, walking around, limping. You ask well, him too. Yeah. Be like, how old are you, Mitch? He'd be like, I'm older than him. Thirty. Yeah. yeah like I'm like, older. Than you're him. not old, Mitch. Yeah. Stop acting like it. Yeah. You know? We graduated together at Mizzou, so anytime I hear people tell uh, him he's old, dang. then I feel old. I'm like, you guys can't do that. That's crazy. Dang, that is wild. Small <laughs> world. I be pick, picking on Mitch so much. In a good way. I don't bully Mitch. I'm just saying. I don't <laughs> pick on Mitch in a brotherly way. And, you know, like, whenever, like, we have functions, like, if Mike is doing something or I'm throwing something or guys are throwing something, Mitch is always the first guy to leave. And I'm like, Mitch, it's <laughs> early. Where are you going? He's like, yeah, man, I got to get some rest. You know, I got to get up early tomorrow and start the day. I'm like, Mitch, you ain't even get to eat yet. Man. <laughs> like, you ain't, it's like, 6 you know o'clock. What, what are you doing? Like, Come on, you old booger. Let's go. <laughs> Let's have a good time. Nah, I really, know? I really want to be just <laughs> one, just one meeting, just go in there and see sure. how you operate, man. I know I'll be it's in, there, definitely different. in the back of the room, flying on the wall, just cracking up, man. You guys are, you guys are hilarious. But it's definitely different. Nah, dude, we appreciate you stepping on this show for real, man. Love episode two, man. You came on with a lot of personality, and um, we just want to say thank you for for stepping on and. Yeah, S- man, send us out of here with with only the way that Dion knows how to do it. Send you out. Yeah, send us out. close it up. Close yeah. it up. Close right here, right here out. in the middle one. All right, let's zoom in on this face. You, you got to turn to this camera. Yeah, you got to go. All right. <laughs> How you guys doing? Thank you for joining in. I'm so glad that you guys had me. I got to sit here with the girl Maddie and the dog Micah Hyde. As you already know, let's keep the vibes, stay love, and stay true. You already know how we do. Skate! Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we out of here. Appreciate you. Yes, Thank, you Mads. It. Thanks, Dion. Thank you, Mads. Thanks, Dion. Thank you, Mads. I love it. Yes, we love you. It's time for whiteboard thoughts. Three random questions, three answers. This is where we get a little bit of our pop culture in. Mm-hmm. Number one, one Bills player you'd want to trade lives with for a day and why? Ooh. Write your answer down. We'll flip it at the same Ooh. time. Okay. Who is it going to be? You ready? We're writing sentences over here. Yeah. All right. Ready? I'm ready. Three, Let's do it. Three, two, one. Right here. Nobody. Oh. I love myself. <laughs> My God. I love myself. And I say that because, you know, if I thought about putting 17 because mm-hmm. he has that bag. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I could do a lot with, with that, with with that, that cash money. that he has. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to say nobody because I love the position that I'm in right now. I, I you know, I... I'm, um, I was frustrated for a while, not uh-huh. playing, not being able to go out there and, and help this team. But, you know, I've established a different role um, on this team. And I'm able to see my teammates just um, take you their games to the next lens. level. Yeah, it's just new lens. I'm on the sideline. Um, obviously, I would rather be out there. Duh. Everybody knows that. But to see my boys out there making plays, defense balling out, you know, Milano going out there, and, you know, just doing what he does. My, my dog Poe out there, Maine, today. I guess literally said the whole entire defense, D-Ham stepping in. So to see them, um, you know, make see all the plays is, is truly remarkable. So that's why I said nobody. And I was going to say, I think conceited. you're selfish, I love myself. Micah. That's a little conceited. I, I just, you know, whatever. It was, I like that. Okay, yeah. good answer. I took the standpoint of like, whose life do I think is very interesting or who is the most interesting man <laughs> that is Ed. in the world on that, this team? That is Ed. And I chose Ed Oliver because we know Ed Oliver rides horses. Yeah. We know Ed Oliver owns a few horses. He just lives the cowboy life. Yes, he and does. I feel like he's just got such a fun personality. There Wait, he is, look at him. riding look at him. the horse. Just Ed, just a casual Tuesday. And it's no Tuesday. big deal, just on the side of the road. We're chilling. <laughs> We're just riding horses. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah. I want to know how to do that. Ed is, I want to is truly, to him truly remarkable. Um, he just, you know, in the off season, I'm sure he wakes up, right, does something in the barn, Goes works out. He probably doesn't even go to a gym to work out. He probably works <laughs> he out. Bails, in, hey. Yeah, he works out in his barn, 
and he just, you know, he, he rides horses all day. That's, that's Ed, man. He knocks down trees with his axes that he owns. I, yeah. I'm making all this up. I don't know. You know but I just feel like that's what Ed Oliver does in yeah, the offseason. Man, I, yeah, you got to appreciate him. He, he brings a lot of personality to the, to the team also. And he's so goofy. Whenever you're around Ed, he's always good for a few laughs, for oh sure. Oh, my gosh. And he's balling out on the field this uh, year. Yep. All right, our final question. What's the coolest place you've ever traveled to and why? I love this one. I love to talk about traveling. I think we could have our own travel show because when we were prepping for this sure. show I think we got in a conversation about travel for like 20 minutes we did all right three two one what you, Jordan you Jordan I got Rwanda mm, you want me to really start this like one off R, yeah start us off loved Jordan um, you know before we had kids we had a life and and we would travel a lot um, and we went to Jordan one summer mm -hmm. um, Amanda has family over there okay and so we got you know chauffeured around um, that's actually in, in uh, Marrakesh in Morocco, but there's gonna filter this photos. Yeah. Um, so we went to photos. yeah yeah. So we went to we went to uh, Jordan, and as you see, Petra Petra is amazing. Like I'm a, I told you beautiful. last week, I love like history and like you know just like ancient stuff. Yeah. Walking through Petra was one of those was one of those times where I was just you know caught up, I was just in awe. Like I couldn't believe that that people designed this city in the mountain years ago. The Dead Sea, we floated in it. Mm -hmm. um, that was amazing itself too. Wadi Rum, where it looks like Mars, uh, where we stayed in some the hotel was like little see-through bubbles and you know at night you could just see the stars felt like you could touch them um, and we had went to we went to uh, Amman the capital mm -hmm. and had the best shawarmas ever um, it, it was so good uh, I'm still trying to find something like that here in Buffalo uh, my wife okay. told me I had to say that because she's dying for a shawarma Bill's mafia. in Buffalo. You know so, what to do. So somebody here has to know how to make the best ones. Okay. So that's I Jordan. What you got? That looks amazing. Now I want to go there. Yeah. Uh, the best place I've been to is Rwanda mm. in Africa. So when I worked for Tennessee before I came for, to the Bills, we did a couple of service trips with our student athletes. Nice. So Rwanda was one of the places that we went to. The country is absolutely beautiful. The people are so nice. Wow, look at that. So fun. So amazing. This was a you took lake that? that we went to. Yes, I, I can. Look at you, photographer. I can dabble in photography. Okay. So this is a beautiful lake that we went to one day. Uh, there was a school right next to the lake. It was 4th of July there. It was so much fun. But the best nice. thing that we did is we went on a gorilla trek. So we trekked two hours Yo, like, into you're the like, mountains. Yo, you're within like feet of. And located a gorilla family. And we got to hang out with this gorilla family for an hour. It was so cool. There's a silverback that was a part of this family. Yeah, there are a couple see, baby I don't know about that. Mama gorillas. And the guides actually told us this was on a safari when a baboon almost jumped on top of me. I was screaming. I was a little bit scared there. But the yeah, guides told us if the silverback comes up to you, because they the silverback will try and like overpower whoever he's well, I, I would think so. so. He would try and come up and like beat his chest. And they told us you have to submit or else like the silverback could come for you. We're like 10 feet away from this silverback gorilla. He that starts awesome. moving around. That's us trekking through the that woods awesome. to find the family. And so to submit, you just had to like. Put your head down. But it was the coolest experience I've ever had in my life. Um, I love gorillas so much, so it was so cool to be so that is, close that to them. That is awesome. I love adorable. I love gorillas too, but I'm gonna tell you what, I don't I don't trust animals. If it, it, <laughs> you I, I hardly trust my own dog, um, let alone a gorilla that's within five feet. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't. Right. I don't really do wild animals, but <laughs> kudos to you. That's dope. I would love to. Uh, to be like in a cage and do that or something, but in that's a dope. Cage. Okay. That's dope. All right, yeah. So Rwanda, Jordan, two cool places. Yes. Maybe two places Bills Mafia will want to go to now. Mm. All righty, we'll a good whiteboard thought segment. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the film room where Mike is going to break down a couple plays in this week's edition of Film Session. And because you're DB, we got to talk interceptions. I love there it. are some good ones around the league this week, but we've got to shout Every out week. Willie Gay yes, this for is a his. Interception that turned into a touchdown yes, this against is such a, the Broncos. Take us through this here. Such a dope play. Uh, we talked about personnel groups mm -hmm. last week. This is another one, 11 personnel. Okay. Um, 11 personnel, you have one back, one tight end, three mm -hmm. receivers, just to break it down for you. And on this play, um, it is a short yardage play. And they are in man to man. Okay. Um, Russell Wilson runs a little boot action. Yep. See uh, that Willie right there. Gay times it up perfectly. You know who does this a lot in practice? Who? 
Uh, AJ Epinesa yes. does this almost every day in yeah. practice. So does Greg. Like, it's like they do it all the time. So I can see them making this play, but he times it up perfectly, tipped the ball to himself, got, put the ball in his left hand, stiff arm with the right, and, and, and scored. The house. And scored. Like that's that's a that's a it's huge play. That's a dominant play. That no, this not was at a all. fourth and one play. Fourth too, and one. So like I said, short you gotta yardage. Have it. You gotta have it. And and they're you know they're down big, so they needed that. The Broncos did. And. Then Willie when you, Gay took it when away. you said Willie Gay timed it up perfectly, mm -hmm. how do you have to time that as a defensive lineman? So they always tell us as as DBs or anybody blitzing or anybody mm -hmm. that gets to the close to the quarterback, we would know, you know, if the quarterback is a He's pump gonna, fake okay. type guy, and they always tell us don't jump. As you can see, he jumped, made the play. If you're gonna jump, you better make the play. That's what the coaches <laughs> say. If you're gonna jump, you better make the play because if you don't jump and then he runs for first down, then you're screwed. Oh God, meetings, then you're gonna see meetings it and film. Cut ups yes, film yes, the next yes. Day. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. But this was a this was what I like to call a dog ass play. I that <laughs> that is that is one of those. That's a dog ass play, Willie Gay. You did that. The Broncos got close there for yeah. a second, but the Chiefs ended up winning that game. Another play we wanted to take you through just because it was amazing yes. was a catch that Terrence Marshall had. It was a knee catch is what we're going to call it. So let's roll the highlight here. The Panthers were up 20 to 17, and what happened? So, you know, he's running just a, you know, a, a little, uh, the receiver's running a little over route. Um, San Darnold puts it on him, almost gets intercepted. It, it, it went through his hands. He threw it in traffic. So, so technically that was a drop, but, you know, the boy's been doing his groin workouts. <laughs> so he, he, he came through and caught it with his, with his thighs. Um, that, that is pretty impressive. And you see that, you know, I, I feel like every year you see catches like this to where, um, you know, it's, off a, it's held against a helmet or behind somebody's back or something like that. And it takes me back. It takes, it takes me back, me back to oh, my no. to my old 33 days in Green Bay, where I was getting held with one arm and 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 old and, and Teddy Bridgewater uh, was scrambling trying to trying to avoid a sack and he threw it left-handed and the only thing I, I think could we do have the play yep here. it's right here it's right here this is old Mike look at him 33 out there young Mike he was moving and backhand grooving. backhands it you know <laughs> and then put it put it against my hip and rolled around um, yeah this that 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 take that play takes me back um what were you thinking on this play I wasn't Micah? thinking because that's the thing crazy. I wasn't I wasn't look he's holding on to my arm I couldn't get my left hand in I had to just swoop it around I I would that was one of those plays that I made um did you where I was like, like I don't remember anything yeah I blacked out <laughs> I'm like I don't know how I did that that was a cool play but I'm sure I'm sure Terrence Marshall was also thinking the same thing when he caught that ball because that's another pretty sweet play that's amazing. We need you to have another one of those next season. For sure. The right, that's, that's the plan. Interception. That's the plan. Young Micah. Young Mike. Still young Mike. Yeah, that's what, that's something what like that. Call him. Something Still like young that. Mike. <laughs> All right. Great film session. Thanks for breaking it down for us and teaching us a little bit more about the game of football. Of course. Let's get into Micah's minute. We've got three questions, more NFL related cool. questions here. So we're going to put a minute on the shot clock. Talk a little uh, things, talk a couple things, and we're going to see if you can discuss in under 60 seconds. Let's do it. Let's Number one it. for you. We are in December football right now, this Micah. Is, this there is, big time is ball. a difference in December football. So, what is the difference in December football? Well, I always say you have preseason, you have early regular season, you have November, December football, and then you have playoff football. And each time it goes up. And this is this is December football. This is where it gets cold. This is where you're 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 pissed off every morning when you get in your car, you're freezing, you know, the salt's on the ground, you don't see the sun, it's dark, and you just come to work every day and you grind, you grind it out because you know when Sunday comes or Saturday night like we have this week, um, it's gonna be a grind to get a win. And and I feel like this is this is where the real teams um, surface. This is where the real good teams surface and you know, we're in that last quarter of the season, so you know, we need it. We need it, and, and uh, I'm excited. So December football is where the, the stars come out and the good teams start to surface. Wow, you did that in a minute exactly. Was it? Um, nice. I'm going to piggyback on you here. December football, you set the tone. We feel it in the building. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys understand that. Mm -hmm. Like, you set the tone, you set the mentality, and the entire building feels like it's December football. Wow. Everybody is a little bit more like you want to win no, when it's Christmas on, time. Like on? when it's Christmas time, you want to be on a on a win streak. You want to be winning over Christmas, over the New Year. Yeah. You know, you, it's just it's just a feel. It's just a, the Christmas spirit. 
but the Buffalo Bills win in spirit. Like, you, like, just, you just want to ride that wave. A hundred percent. And we're like, we want to do our best. We want to put the best stuff out there. Mm -hmm. We want to support you guys mm -hmm. how we can because Bring we your know a game. the playoffs are coming. Bring yep. your A game. Bring your All A right. game to December. Second topic. You guys have such an interesting life in the NFL. I feel like you have not yeah. enough time in the day to do everything you need to do and then go at home, go home and be a husband yeah. and a father. Yeah. So describe life as an NFL player. What's that daily schedule? Right now, my like? life right now, or as if I'm Let's as if go I'm playing. healthy, Micah. Okay, healthy, Micah. Healthy, <laughs> Micah is getting up at, at 6.30 in the morning. Um, I'm having a, a quick little coffee with my wife. Um, you know, we're talking about how the, how the day's about to be, what we're about to do, and then, you know, I come into the complex, and um, I get in the hot tub, I make sure I, I loosen this body up, shower, you know, you got to shower, I got the best hygiene on the team, so I, I got I to gotta say that. Not like um, a little dirty. Yeah, not like a little dirty, that boy stinks. And then, and then I go to meetings, and you're in meetings the whole time, and then you practice, and after practice you have more meetings, and after that, you know, if it's, if it's a Thursday, you have the DB dinner, um, which we like to go and, and have a little... Uh, you know the little brotherhood, you know type of type of vibe, and then after that, go home. Kids probably asleep, so you know I gotta wake up the next morning or, or see them on a, on a day off. Oh, and the amount of time that you guys spend watching film, I cannot imagine fathom. You go to meetings, and then I feel like you go home and you just watch film yeah, in your free time. Yeah, we watch we watch film on practice. You know, as AI would say, we're we're talking practice. Like we. Everything is detailed. Everything that we do in practice is watched. And so um, that was new to me. You know, that was, that I, I guess, you know, college we did a little bit. Once I got into the NFL, it just, it, you know, you are watching so And that's why this league is so tough. That's why this league is so tough because every little play, every little nuance, every little detail is being watched. All right, our last topic, what type of duo is your favorite duo and why? So here I'm thinking you've got quarterback wide receiver duos, you've got safety tandems, you got cornerbacks, yes, you got defensive ends, defensive tackles, yeah. you got defensive tackles. What's your favorite duo in the NFL? Now you know you know my answer to this. You know it's my an answer. Easy it's, answer it's, huh? it's the safety duo. It's the safety duo. I, you know, I've you know, since since getting here in 2017 with Poe, uh, we've played a lot of snaps together. Um, you know, I feel like we've we've we have that standard um, to where, you know, we just have that communication without having communication on the field, um, and then having somebody like D Ham step in right now and really just, you know, he had a, a forced fumble last week, um, just making plays and and you know really stepping in and balling. So, um, yeah, my favorite duo is safety duo. When I'm watching film, I like to watch to see how the safeties operate. And you know whether if it's disguise or you know pre-snap stuff or post-snap post -snap stuff talking, um, you know I feel like I'm I'm always watching on film because it's it's a it's a skill it's a skill it's a skill for me to know exactly where Poe is even though I'm not even paying attention to him you know it's kind of just like you know where he's at it's just you know a lot of practice you you get there. Sixty seconds on the clock again. You did it yes. perfectly. I want to ask you one question based off what you said. You said you, you guys can do things without really even signaling mm -hmm. or speaking. What does that look like on the field? Because we, we hear that answer a lot yeah. from, from you and Jordan. Yeah. And we hear it so much, it's like, okay, how, okay. how does it so, come together? So this is how it comes together. Um, we've played a lot of snaps together, like I said. We have a lot, we have a lot of experience together. And, I, and this isn't just Poe and I, but mm -hmm. any safety duo that has played a long time, um, first of all, you get the call, and you know the strength and the weakness of that call, mm -hmm. right? So then from there, you, 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 talk about, um, you talk about what could happen within that play. And you only have a couple seconds to, to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? And then from there, once they get lined up, you got to think about, oh, who can go in motion? Because yeah, I think in this day and age of the NFL, no one just lines up and says, hey, all right, ready, set, hike. There's no, a lot of window you dressing. Got, there's a lot of window that. dressing. He's, Nice. I like you that. Know. A lot of window dressing. So you got guys zooming this way, zooming that way. So you got to pre-snap talk and talk about, you know, who can go in motion, who, you know, all this type of stuff. And so you're making calls. You know, most of the time, one safety is controlling that side of the field. The other safety is controlling this side of the field. So you got to be on board so that the whole field is coming together. And, you know, you can't have bus on the back end because if there's bus on the back end, it's seven points. Yes. And, and everybody knows that you know, Micah Hyde points. messed up that play because the commentators are going to talk about it. Everybody's <laughs> going to talk about it. And they're going to they're gonna call you out on TV. So it's kind of one of those things that when the play comes in, you just immediately get to, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of the defense. And you go, you go from there and you just make plays. 
easy as that. Yeah, easy. You make it yeah. sound so easy. Yeah, yeah, make it. It's not. It's not though. Yeah. It's not. It definitely not. isn't yep. because of the time that goes into it. Um, thanks for educating us on some of that. Yeah, for We're sure. We're gonna go into shout out Bills Mafia. In our first episode, we tweeted out and we asked fans to share pictures of themselves mm -hmm. and tell us who their favorite player was. We had some incredible responses. This week, we wanted to see your decked out Bills room, Bills cave. Oh yeah, let's and see. It. Look, my, this is ours. Oh my. This is our, wait, we no. got a we over got here. a cool Bills cave yep, behind I'm up us. Over right there. You got, know? The, got the jerseys behind me. Got a there picture of Micah, a big picture of Micah yeah, back yeah, there. Yeah. So there were some awesome, let's, let's check some them out. awesome spaces. Nice. Number one, this is from Devo at M Divine 29. This almost wow. looks like multiple rooms in a house. I don't understand how this can all be one room. If it's not one room, wow. If it is one room, oh my gosh, you got you got a lot of space to work with. It's I feel like every, every inch is yeah. Every I feel like every covered. Bills Mafia fan is their basement looks like this. Like they're just this is what they do. They just they deck it out. You know they got the bar. You got to have the bar down there. You yeah. Because you know. Bills Mafia likes to have a good time. <laughs> and then on top of that, you know, it's just all the jerseys, all the signatures, all the helmets. That's that's awesome. And it that's, must be that's collected dedication. over a bunch of years to be able to fill a space like that. And really For like sure. every nook and cranny. Like yeah. little collections, collector's items is probably big as a quarter. Yeah, for that. sure. That's crazy. That's, that's pretty impressive. Way that's to nice. go. All right, we're going to go to our next one from East Coast Bills Backers. I really like this one because it almost looks like it has a bar feel, and I like that. Mm. Like we're walking into a bar. Wow, look at, that. look at that. The sofas, the red sofas. Oh, that's huge. You got the blue on the walls. Got a little lounge. There's a area. shuffleboard table over there too. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to visit these places. Maybe yeah, one you've day. got the nice yeah, TVs. Yeah, watch, watch a game with them or something. Yeah, that's that's big time. That Sorry, is... Michael wasn't on the sidelines this week. He wanted to go watch with East Coast Bills backers. <laughs> yeah, you know what? In you never know. You never know what might happen. <laughs> you never know where I'm at. So. All right, number three. This one is coming from Nick. Uh, he actually, his handle is at the Man's Cave 716. So you know Nick has got it going Dang. on. Yes. I really like the bar. The bar looks nice. The bar, look at the multiple TVs. Wall of TVs. The signature. Oh, I see Spence. Look at Spence Brown drinking a beer. I love <laughs> it. Got the jerseys up. Yeah, man. The this Bill's is. Bill's logo on the wall. Jeez, that's impressive. Yeah. This is Bill's Mafia. They just, there's, there's no one like them. Like there you can't is. compare this to anything else. No. Like I've seen some pretty it's cool, wild. some pretty cool man caves from other teams and from, you know, from my past experiences. But this, yeah, this, they're, they're taking it all the way. Oh, yeah. There was like 15 Josh Allen jerseys. Like when, nice. like, okay, we get it. You got lots of, you got lots <laughs> of money. That's in your that favorite room, Nick. <laughs> No, that's awesome. There were some great ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, this fan base is incredible. We want to continue to share things that you guys have. Uh, keep them coming. Keep them coming. Videos in. that you have, players that are your favorite. We'll we'll keep putting the questions out there for you. But that's gonna do it for our second episode of our the M and M show. Look at us. We're off the ground and running. Yes, let's do it. Different set. Different set. We didn't talk about it. But it hey, looks good though. It looks very good. I think it looks good. Here we are. Make sure you guys stay tuned for more episodes because we've got another one dropping next week. So stay tuned for Micah Hyde. I'm Maddie Glab. Oh yeah. Yeah.